Welcome back to Mycology Exploration. We're going to talk about agar in this video and how you do not need a heated stir plate to create agar recipes. You don't need it. We do, however, use the magnets that came with the heated stir plate. We love these bottles. They make everything so much easier. A big fan of these bottles. You can pressure cook them. They're amazing. However, I'm going to show you a way to make your agar in a pan. You don't even have to turn your stovetop on. So there's two different ways here that you can make agar without a heated stir plate. The bottles make it so much easier. And especially if you're going to be pouring to Petri dishes, meaning you're going to pressure cook and then pour to Petri dishes, the bottles are kind of a must have because you can't pressure cook the pan full of agar, but you can pressure cook these bottles. So when you have the magnet on the stir plate, that magnet inside spins around, but you don't need the stir plate because you can just spin it yourself. You just swirl the bottle around and you don't need the heat element because you're going to use boiling hot water for all your agar recipes. It's so easy when you use boiling hot water. And by boiling hot water, that means you're going to boil water and then add it to your dry ingredients. So you're not going to be using that pan to boil your water. The heated stir plate at the beginning, it made sense. But then when we got really good at making agar, the husband was like, we don't even need this. It overcomplicates it. Let's just add boiling hot water. So I want to show you two different ways that you can make any agar recipe without the heated stir plate. And again, you don't need to heat anything other than boiling your water, your hot water. And I've got my kettle going right now. So we have used these MEA blends. And you're still going to have to measure out those blends depending on how much agar you want to make. Now, these blends come with instructions on how to create it. And it's always recommended to pressure cook your agar for 15 to 20 minutes at 15 PSI and to not overcook to caramelize the sugars. So there is a sugar in the malt barley extract that is similar to honey, and you don't want to burn those, caramelize those. You also want to keep all of your dry ingredients dry. That's why I put a silica packet in with that MEA blend. Keeping everything dry is actually highly recommended. I think it's really important because if anything's wet, the dry ingredients will stick to it and it'll be sticky. The sugars will make it sticky, but also the agar is a gel. It becomes gelatin, so it starts to congeal. And you'll just have a mess. So add your dry ingredients to your bottle or your pan first. So when you measure out your dry ingredients, keep it clean and dry. You can see how dry this agar is. Keep everything dry because if you add any wetness to your ingredients in the packages, you'll ruin your ingredients. So with your ingredients here, use dry spoons dry ways of measuring. And so here on the scale, I already have our malt barley extract. It's a light malt barley extract. And I'm going to add the agar. Again, I'm not doing an exact recipe here. I just want to show you the process, but you're going to get exact measurements. And we have videos for all of our recipes. We use a water agar. We use an MEA recipe and an MYA recipe with nutritional yeast. So we like to use three different plates, whether we're cloning or transferring, we do the water agar, which is just water and agar. Then we do an MEA and we do an MYA with that nutritional yeast. We love the nutritional yeast. So I put the agar in first, and now I'm putting in the malt barley extract. And again, this is not 
a recipe that I'm following right now. I just want to show you putting in your dry ingredients first, keeping it all dry. So you can see on the bottle, I didn't get any of the dry ingredients around the lid, the mouth, the mouth of that bottle, keeping that dry. Because when you add this boiling hot water, you'll see all the condensation. So if there were any ingredients around the, the top of that bottle, it would start congealing and getting sticky. With the pan, it's really easy. You'll just put your dry ingredients in, add your boiling hot water. So with the bottle, I'm just going to swirl it and the magnet is going to break all the dry ingredients up and you'll see how fast it dissolves. I mean, even in the pan, you can see how fast the ingredients are dissolving. And I'm going to get a thermometer here for you in just a minute so you can see the, the temperature on this. So the one in the bottle is ready to go and the pan just a few little stirs here, and it's perfect. So after everything has dissolved, this would be a perfect time to add food coloring if you were going to add a drop of food coloring. We just did a video and a shorts on the food coloring and why you would use food coloring for home mycology. And I really love the comment on that video that said, well, it's just cool. It's just cool to add the food coloring. It is. It looks amazing. And the color contrast makes the mycelium pop on your dishes. So here you can see everything is ready. It's dissolved. It looks great. There's no clumping of any dry ingredients. Look how clean everything is. It was that easy. So let's get a temperature on this. It's going to be in the 160s. And it cools quickly. It cools quickly. I definitely recommend if you're going to be pouring to no pour jars that you make sure you get them poured before it cools, un cools to under 140 degrees. So don't wait to pour your no pour jars. As soon as it's ready, you can go ahead and start pouring your jars. With the no pour jar technique, the pan works perfectly because you'll be pouring that agar to your jars and then pressure cooking. If you're using the Petri dishes, then you would use the bottle. You would pressure cook your bottle first and then pour to Petri dishes and your still air box or in front of your vent. So here's a no pour jar, that simple, that easy. You don't pour a lot. You want it to be really thin. Most of these jars have a little bump up in the middle. So the outer will be a little bit thicker than the center. So when I pour the no pour jars, I just want to make sure that we've covered the center of the jar. There's enough agar layer in the center because most of the clones and transfers will go in the center of the jar. So you can see how quick just when I poured that, it cooled in the jar. And when agar begins to cool, again, under 140 degrees, it starts to congeal and get thick. So pour all of your jars before your agar cools. You're going to need to put a lid on there. And we've talked about flipping the lids. You can certainly flip your lid to have some ventilation, but you'll need to put foil over that before you put it in your pressure cooker. So if you flip your lids on your no pour jars, add foil to the top. If you do not flip your lids, there's no need to add foil to the top. It'll create a suction and that's ready to go in the pressure cooker. With the bottle, you would pressure cook that and then again, you would pour to your Petri dish in your still air box or in front of your, your vent. So there is no need to have any kind of heat going, heat element, when you use boiling hot water. It's that easy. We'll see you in the comments.